In today's world, young women fully expect the same rights for an education and job as a young man has. However, some do not realize the amount of work, effort, determination, and time it took for many women to reach this point. The second feminist movement began in the 1940s with the outbreak of World War II and the involvement of the United States. It was the big push that women needed to become more involved and recognized in the workforce. At the beginning of World War II, 12 million women were in the workforce, or about one quarter of the workforce once combined with men. By the end of World War II, 18 million women made up about one third of the workforce. This high increase is due to the fact that employers needed women to replace the jobs the men had left behind for the army. Many women were uneasy to enter the workforce at first, but were persuaded once the patriotic Rosie the Riveter poster was released. In the war plants and factories, women had to work with large machinery to build war materials, such as airplanes and bullets. In addition, the Women's Auxiliary Army Corps, which soon upgraded to the Women's Army Corps, became the first women's service branch. Yet with all the new jobs women were accepted into, they still did not receive the same benefits as men. One such problem was one that is often still seen today, that women were paid less than men, rarely earning more than 50% of male wages. Either way, the 40s was the big jumpstart women needed to make a name for themselves in the workforce. However, once the 1950s rolled around, the number of women in the workforce decreased. It was mainly due to the men returning home from war, taking back their jobs they'd left behind, and leaving women to return to household duties. In addition, TV sitcoms such as Leave it to Beaver, The Donna Reed Show, and Father Knows Best portrayed the mother as a housewife, and more or less became a role model to women during this time. Like the 40s, the 60s was also an important time for working women, especially in earning their rights. Several bills and acts were passed to help women face discrimination in the pay gap between men and women. Around the time the Equal Pay Act in 1963 was signed by President John F. Kennedy, women were only making 58 cents for every dollar a man earned. Although it still has not completely closed the pay gap, the Equal Pay Act of 1963 has helped to lessen it by prohibiting unequal pay to men or women in the same job. The next year, the Equal Right Act of 1964 passed, illegalizing the discrimination of hiring and firing of employees based on gender. August 26, 1970 marked the 50th anniversary of the passing of the 19th Amendment, which granted women the right to vote. The National Organization of Women, created in 1966, sought equality for women. So on August 26, 1970, they called for all women throughout the country to strike for equality, demonstrating that women still do not have equal rights compared to men. The strike was extremely successful, having 50,000 women march in New York City alone. It was also broadcasted on major TV networks, including ABC, CBS, and NBC. A year later, Congress recognized August 26 as Women's Equality Day to commemorate the passing of the 19th Amendment and the day in 1970 in which they demonstrated their continuing fight for equal rights. In 1978, women achieved another milestone with the passing of the Pregnancy Discrimination Act. This act amended Title VII of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 by prohibiting gender discrimination on the basis of pregnancy. As more and more women enter the workforce, more and more women enroll in colleges and universities. However, it was never easy for women to simply enroll in a college or graduate school. In an interview with Linda Silber, she describes the trouble she encountered when she began to apply for graduate school. Did you go into this field because it was more receptive to women or just because you're so... No, it wasn't receptive at all to women. It was very hard. There was one woman in the psych department as, I, as an undergraduate. And even though I had stellar grades, um, and I got ready to go to grad school, none of my professors would give me a letter of recommendation because I was a female. Over time, acceptance of women being in wrong college has far increased. In fact, women have surpassed men in the number of degrees earned. In a 2010 census, 36% of women aged 25 to 29 had college degrees, compared to only 28% of men in the same age group. It is heavily advised that women or anyone in general completely research on what is needed to be done in college to eventually get the job they desire. In a phone interview with Linda Miller, she says just that. And do you have, my last question, do you have any advice to women who want to be moving up in their field? I think my biggest advice is, is to be sure you get the kind of education you need. Um, and, you know, look at, look at what people in the field you want to go into, find out what their credentials are and what they've done and what they, you know, what they majored in. It doesn't mean they all majored in the same thing, but, um, you know, what did they major in? Did they have their MBA? What, what graduate courses did they take? So that you know what it takes to get into that field and do well. It is considered the norm today to see women working alongside, above, or below men, whatever the job position may be. However, 30 to 60 years ago, it was not so. 
Women had a fight to earn the rights they believe they deserved, a fight that still continues today, such as the Paycheck Fairness Act. Although it has failed to pass the Senate in 2010 and 2011, the Paycheck Fairness Act would have required employers to show that any wage controversies were not based on gender but on business requirements and specific characteristics of the position. The Paycheck Fairness Act was created to work on decreasing the pay gap between men and women. According to the 2008 census, women only earned 77 cents for every dollar a man earned. Although being much higher than 58 cents in 1963, it is incredible that there is still a pay gap after all this time, even with the acts and bills that have been passed. We also consider it the usual today to see women enrolled in colleges and universities alongside men. As the workforce becomes more competitive, it is important for women, as well as men, to have higher degrees. People with a master's degree are being chosen for a job over someone with an associate's or bachelor's degree. And my last question, do you have any advice to women who want to be moving up in their field? In nursing or any field? Nursing or any field. Education. Mm -hmm. I think education is the key. Uh, nursing, because uh, now in the, our nursing field, you know, you can have different levels of degrees. You can have your associate's degree, you can have your diplomas, and you have your bachelor's. The key now is to have your bachelor's degree. And then, um, go on from there. Uh, management positions, you need your bachelor's degree. You know, at least, you know, to move up, you need your bachelor's degree. So, I just encourage all education, just to keep going and going and going. With all changes taking place in education and the workplace for women, they still manage to keep up with about the same duties at home that they've always had, with the addition of help from their husbands. Studies show that within the past couple of decades, men have assumed more duties at home than ever before, as women become more involved in the workforce and still keep about the same rate of duties at home. In conclusion, women have achieved several victories throughout the past 60 years to earn better working rights and still have some to earn in the future.